So today will be one of those uh, daily cancellations, perhaps the most common variety, where there is no good guy. Uh, no one to defend, no one's side to take. In fact, uh, I, I wouldn't be talking about this issue at all if not for the fact that I have a segment on this show called The Daily Cancellation. This story is made for such a segment, and so here we are. It begins with a young woman named Maddie Hart, who is, of course, a TikTok influencer. And if you have a very sharp memory, you may actually remember Maddie. She went viral several weeks ago after telling a story about the feminism, quote, leaving her body after going on a date with a guy who paid for the meal. Um, and if your memory is even sharper uh, than that, you, you may recall that I expressed uh, some skepticism about her anti-feminism conversion. You know, I, I didn't, I wasn't quite sure that this was totally sincere. Uh, we don't need to rehash all that. I will say that I was, of course, correct. She posted a follow-up video where she said that she was just kidding. Don't worry, she's a feminist. Uh, she still has purple hair, hair, et cetera. Purple hair in spirit, anyway. Her hair isn't actually purple, but it you know, might as well be. Anyway, Maddie is um, back now, this time with a, a funny story about her dad, who, she says, abandoned the family when she was a child. And uh, But she's got a, a funny story to relate about that. Um, here's part of it. What's a piece of trauma that you have that's funny? It has to actually be funny. I'll go first. My dad abandoned my family when I was five years old. That is um, a wife and four kids. He abandoned us and then pursued amateur breakdancing. And he got really good. <laughs> he like blew up. Like he became like a D-list celebrity status, like viral breakdancer. He became like the oldest actively competing breakdancer in the world. Then he got on Good Morning America and talk shows and Washington Post wrote about him and he went super viral and he did all these interviews and he danced with Paula Abdul. And here, I'll show you. To see, take a look at this 60 year old break dance. The worst part, damn it, he's good. He should not be able to move his body like that. It's like impossible, it's beautiful. Hey dad. Like there was no split custody or anything. Like he just like left four kids to do that. He may not have paid for some of my medical bills growing up, but he did give me this breakdancing merchandise. So that's him, he's on his head. Benny Hanna is his b-boy name because his name is Ben Hart. You know, I'll get texts like this, happy birthday question mark, and then like links to his, to his breakdancing videos. Now I, like many millions of other people, um, would not have known about this video or this story, if not for the dad in question, who responded to his daughter's TikTok with a viral video of his own. Uh, ben Hart is apparently a wealthy advertising executive, and here he is in his Bitcoin shirt, shirt uh, responding to his daughter, who he says is a Hollywood screenwriter, by the way. So we have, a, we have a, uh, I guess, an advertising versus Hollywood blood feud playing out via viral videos. It's like the most modern and most annoying version of Hatfield and McCoy that you can imagine. So here's Ben with his uh, clap back. First, I can see that as a five-year-old, Maddie would see her dad as having abandoned the family. One day I was living there, the next day I wasn't. And that will look like abandonment to a child. But married couples do get divorced about half the time in America. And I was just living a mile or so down the street in LaGrange, Illinois. We just weren't living under the same roof. Now, about not paying medical bills, that's just not correct. Here was the financial arrangement of the divorce. Maddie's mom, my ex-wife, got $2 million at the get-go, out of the gate, a lump sum payment. Plus, I was paying her $18,000 per month in child support and alimony. This was later reduced to $12,000 per month. And of course, I paid health insurance and out-of-pocket medical costs. I also put $600,000 into the kids' college fund. In all, I paid out about $5 million to my ex-wife to cover costs for her and the kids. And this is in 2005 dollars. So add 50% to account for inflation. In other words, I was not a deadbeat dad at all. And by the way, Maddie did not say that in her video. But a lot of the comments assume that and say that. Now, of course, there was no way for Maddie to know how much I was paying because she was a kid. This wasn't something I talked about. Also, remember that I was living one mile down the road from the kids in LaGrange, Illinois. Sidewalks all the way. An easy walk or bike ride. I saw the kids all the time. No abandonment, just a divorce. Was I at fault in the divorce? Yeah, I would say it was about 70% at fault. I own that. Maddie's mom and I were really not compatible in many ways. We were compatible in some ways, but not in other ways. Okay, now it continues on like this. Uh, his response video is 10 minutes long, and the crux of his point, as you heard, is that he didn't abandon the family. He just got divorced. 
Uh, he gave the kids lots of money, and he still saw them all the time. It was a big part of their life. The video also went viral, uh, that video did, getting millions of views. And while Maddie's video brought out hundreds of negative comments about the dad, this one rallied the troops against the daughter. And many of the comments, some from big-name right-wing accounts, in fact, praised the dad for setting the record straight and putting his spoiled brat daughter in her place and so on. Uh, they took his side and they insisted that claims of ab abandonment were unfair, untrue. Um, many comments called Ben's video wholesome because, of course, there's nothing more wholesome than a father and daughter squabbling on the internet in front of an audience of millions. Not just that's wholesome family content. Not, like honestly, I find the wholesome description totally baffling. I, some of the ways people have reacted to that last video, it's just I, it boggles my mind. I'm like, what? What video are you watching? So all these really support. Oh, this was a great video. This was wonderful. What? What are you, do you understand? What's happening here? I can only assume that these people are impressed with his tone of voice, which is supposed to sound measured and cheerful, but which to anyone with even the slightest bit of experience dealing with narcissistic phonies comes off as gratingly smug and artificial. But this was not the end of it. So Maddie had more to say. She responded to her dad's response and said that, in fact, he's the one not telling the full truth. Watch. But I know my dad posted like a 10 minute video or whatever being like, you know, my daughter's lying. We have a great relationship. I have a great relationship with all my kids. That's just objectively not true. Like, guys, we're all freaking out about this in my family group chat right now. We're being like, he's so unhinged and delusional. We don't know if he actually believes his own narrative or if he's lying on purpose, but he's just like a weird guy. Yeah, he said he lived down the street from us. That's not true. Or like, if he did, it was only for a few months, maybe. But actually, for most of my childhood, he lived in Florida with his new wife. Like, basically, like, I don't want to get into this. Like, again, like my video was basically like sanitizing the situation and like poking fun at the lightest parts of that childhood trauma. But obviously in real life, it was a lot more like complicated and traumatic and it was really hard. He left us, immediately married another woman. We didn't hear from him for years. And then he would visit every few months and we'd go out to dinner. But like, he truly had no hand in raising us at all. We don't speak with any sort of regularity. He doesn't know when my birthday is. Like, as you guys saw in the video I posted, he got it wrong. He gave us some money growing up. I Like, I honestly don't know the nitty gritty of the financial situation. I, I really, really don't. But I do know that several times I've asked him for financial help with medical expenses, like, especially, like, in college. And he wouldn't help me. So that's what I was referring to in my video when I was, like, he wouldn't pay some of my medical bills. So uh, Maddie says that her dad uh, did leave the family. He moved to another state, started a new family, at least a new marriage, and they have uh, basically no relationship at all and never have. Um, her, uh, her dad claims otherwise. People on the internet, meanwhile, have, have gone to their battle stations and have taken one side or the other, um, and that's the way these things generally go. Now, for my part, I can only say that everyone is wrong, everyone is stupid, everything is terrible, and the internet is the worst mistake mankind has ever made. Or at least if we have to come to a sweeping conclusion that lacks any semblance of nuance, I think that's the safest one to draw. But if we're going to take the time to analyze this in greater depth, then um, there are some things to consider. So first of all, Ben dismisses Maddie's claims of abandonment as the immature perspective of a small child. But in the process, he only shows that he is the one with the immature perspective and, and, and that the small child in this case has more honesty and insight than he does. Because if you leave your family and you start a new one, you have abandoned them. Okay, if, if your kids live in a house and you leave and you go somewhere else, uh, uh, especially to a whole other state, although the state doesn't even matter, but yes, you've, you've left them. How else do you want to put it? It doesn't matter if you give them money. Five dollars, five million dollars, five billion dollars. A father is more than a checkbook. You cannot replace your paternal role by sending cash, which is a point that really shouldn't need to be explained or defended. But but judging by the comments, it seems that it does. And this again is a lot of conservatives who, who apparently don't understand this that are saying, "Well, he gave him a lot of money." Is that is that what we're doing now? We as as conservatives, we're saying that family a father can be replaced with money. Oh, yeah, because we know that, you know, uh, uh, everyone knows that rich kids, they, they always turn out perfectly well, right? We, you never have dysfunctional rich families with kids that are totally destroyed and end up being dysfunctional, um, miserable people. That never happens, right? 
You know, when you're running a business, time is money. And that's why I'm so excited to introduce you to Ramp. If you're a finance professional looking for a better way to maximize productivity and cut wasteful spending, then Ramp could be for you. Ramp is a corporate card and spend management software designed to help you save time and put money back in your pocket. With Ramp, you can issue cards to every employee with limits and restrictions. You can also stop wasting time at uh, the end of every month by automating your expense reporting. Ramp's accounting software automatically collects receipts and categorizes your expenses in real time so you don't have to. You'll never have to chase down a receipt again, and your employees will no longer spend hours submitting expense reports. The time you'll save each month on employee expenses will allow you to close your books eight times faster. Ramp is so easy to use. Get started in less than 15 minutes, whether you have five employees or 5,000. Get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash Walsh, spelled R-A-M-P dot com slash Walsh. Again, that's ramp.com slash Walsh. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank, members FDIC, terms and conditions apply. Now, it is true that not every divorced man is guilty of abandoning his family. So I'm not saying that just because there was a divorce that the father abandoned the family. It's possible that the wife could be the one who destroys the family and rips the home apart and and, and then then leaves you and takes the kids against your will and and all that kind of stuff. And if that's the case, then you certainly do not deserve the deadbeat label as, as, as it has been stuck unfairly on so many men. But That does not at all appear to be the case here. In fact, Ben admits that he's mostly to blame for the divorce. I don't know what the case is or not. I can only take his word for it. He said it was mostly his fault. So I guess it was. He apparently left the state and and got married to a new woman. His daughter says that he made no effort to maintain any kind of real fatherly relationship. Uh, This is something that, you know, when your children are, are children, when they're actually kids, you know, that, that is entirely on you as the parent to do. So if, if there is no relationship with your kids, then that is your fault. Because the burden is 100% yours to form and maintain that relationship. Um, or, or the responsibility, let's say. I wouldn't call it a burden. But it's, it's on you. And if you don't do it, you, your kids will grow to resent you. And that will be 100% entirely, with no equivocation, your own fault. It's true that Ben disputes some of this. He says that he lived close by. He says that he has a great relationship with his kids. But there's plenty of reason to doubt his version of events. I mean, the first reason is that he still, decades later, denies that leaving the state and starting a new family counts as abandoning your kids. He he still, even now, apparently believes that money is a sufficient substitute for being an attentive father. His daughter paints him as an oblivious narcissist who's more focused on himself and his own needs, and everything about his response seems to lend credence to that claim. Also, we know his story about being close to his children is obviously a lie, because if you're close to your child, she isn't going to make a video like this about you in the first place. So when when your daughter's making this kind of video about you as a father, and you're saying, well, I'm really close with my daughter. Uh, No, you're not. That's not going to happen if you are. You also probably aren't going to be texting her on her birthday Uh, on a day that isn't her birthday, with a message that says, happy birthday with a question mark. And look, I'll be the first to to say that men, I I give more leeway in forgetting dates and all that. Our brains just aren't wired that way. But yeah, you just saw from the screenshot of the text, like, there's a a text, happy birthday, question mark. Like, that that is not exactly uh, a, a, a hallmark of a close fatherly bond, okay? Now, Ben, with his 1990s radio disc jockey cadence, says that he got divorced because he was not compatible with Maddie's mom. Um, They were uh, compatible in some ways, he explains, but not in all ways. So this is a man in his 60s looking back on his life, reflecting on choices that profoundly altered the lives of his four children, and this is what he comes up with. They were not compatible, as if the marriage was some kind of software program, as if somebody accidentally poured the wrong kind of oil into the engine or something. Being incompatible with another person, that's just another way of saying that the other person is another person, okay? That the person isn't you. The person has their own personality traits and ideas and priorities and desires and and so on. Incompatible doesn't mean anything in this context. It's just an excuse that you make when you give up. It's another way of saying that you're too lazy and too selfish to do the basic work that marriage, that any meaningful relationship requires. And the idea that, you know, you would put your kids through the nightmare of a divorce, that you would rip their universe in half because of incompatibility is just, it's just reprehensible. It just is. 
Now, on the other hand, the, the daughter is an adult now, and, and uh, while I can certainly see why she doesn't like her dad and doesn't want anything to do with him, um, uh, and, and that she's perfectly entitled to have that point of view, obviously. And again, you know, uh, now it's it's possible that your, your kids could grow older and they can become adults and become estranged from you, but through no fault of your own, that kind of thing can happen. It does happen. It's tragic, but most of the time, if your kid is an adult and they don't want anything to do with you, most of the time it's because you were a terrible parent, and you might not want to tell yourself that. You might still be telling yourself stories. I mean, I. I we have all encountered plenty of adults like this who maybe are older, maybe around uh, Ben's age, and and their kids like their kids don't like them and and don't want anything to do with them, and they still are like telling themselves that 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 they have this version of their of their history of their kids' childhood that's completely fa- a complete fantasy, and they refuse to. It's like why do you think your kids feel this way about you? It, it's what do you think? It's you think the whole world's against you, or could it be that you just did a terrible job as a parent? You formed no relationship with them when they were kids, and so now there's nothing there. There's, there's no, there's, what are they going to try to rekindle? There's nothing to rekindle. There's nothing there. So all of that is totally valid on Maddie's part. But the problem is that she's the one who chose to make all this public. You know, you might have very legitimate reasons to resent your dad or your mom or anyone else in your family, but there's no legitimate reason to announce that fact to millions of strangers on the internet. Your familial strife does not need to be and never should be mere content for people on TikTok or Twitter to consume. Nothing good comes from it. It will never make anything you're dealing with any better. It will only make everything worse, guaranteed, every time. Okay, Maddie is, is, she's not being melodramatic when she calls her parents' divorce traumatic. TikTokers abuse the hell out of that term, trauma, as we know. But in this case, it's been used appropriately. She has experienced trauma. But she isn't going to heal that trauma by converting it into 10 million views on TikTok. That's not how it works. So in conclusion, don't air your family drama publicly. Um, Don't get divorced. Don't leave your family and go start a new one. Don't wear a Bitcoin shirt. Don't do anything that these people have done or are doing because they are today canceled. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.